Hey guys, Jeremy here at RC Collaborative and today I'm going to show you how to set up your starter box. Some tips and some ideas uh, maybe make your life easier and some concepts that maybe you haven't seen before. So let's check that out. Yo, I ain't here for the money, I ain't here for the fame. Though it might be nice to own a jet plane, I'm going to do it all for you. Come along and see it's true, but the world is pretty cold, you might need a sweater too. Alright, so I've got two starter boxes here. They're both the same starter box or low C starter boxes. This is my main box. Um, this is the one that I use every day. And I want to tell you kind of what I've done to it and the history on it and what I think makes it better than what it used to be. Um, so, one of the things that I found with these starter boxes, like this one I rescued, had chicken wire for electrical wire in here it was like really thin and it just couldn't get any amp draw to the to the uh, motor so one of the things I did is I rewired both of them uh, with some better wire see this is 16 gauge wire here but this is the silicone wire from marine um, I've used this in my other videos for soldering you get this at West Marine um, I usually have this stuff around. It's kind of the only wire I buy because it's um, corrosion resistant, which is what you want in this kind of environment anyways. So um, one of the things I did, and the most important thing you can do, is put a LiPo in it. So when you do that, you need the stronger wires, or if your wiring is damaged, make sure you've got good wiring. So when I did that, I, um, I soldered in my Deans here, and I left a little pigtail here. Now, this pigtail serves multiple purposes. I charge my battery through this. Um, you know, I leave the power switch off. So I, I, um, I charge my battery through this. And not only that, if for some reason this starter box blows a belt or something happens to it and it quits working, I can take another starter box and literally plug it into this battery um, I have an extension lead so I could literally set both of these boxes up side by side and they would share the same battery um, if I got somebody out there that needs a starter box or something and they have a truggy or a buggy or whatever it is they could set this one up next to mine and we could share a battery uh, and do it that way uh, another thing is that I can just plug my head warmer into it and that's an amazing feature so this battery here is a 7400 milliamp uh, 9DC battery. It's got a lot of power. The I believe the batteries that they sell for starter boxes are only in the two to three thousand milliamp range. So this one being a 7400, I leave it at a storage charge all the time, and it works just fine. I never charge this battery up. I just leave it at a storage charge. It'll probably last forever, um, and it's got more than enough power. And I'll charge it to like you know four volts and by the end of the day you know it's 3.85 when I charge it I just pull these little two out and I stand it up next to my charger and I plug it into the balance lead and I plug it into the Dean's lead and I charge it like that so that's how I have the power set up now the um, the contacts here uh, they were damaged when I got this box um, when I got this box, they, uh, it would stick. You turn it on and it would stay running because the copper had burned a hole all the way across and it was about to fall off. So it would, it, it would get hot when it connects, it would kind of stick to the contact. So there is a way to replace that, uh, to fix that. What I did is I took the contact out and I soldered copper plates to both sides of it and filled it in with solder and then ground it down flat and I made my own contact and that fixed that issue so um, if you need more details on that or if I have to do it again I can always make a video on it but I just wanted to, to bring that up if your box isn't firing you might have an issue there you can take a screwdriver and touch it together and if it works like that then you know maybe you've got an issue with the switch with the contact then you can address that um, another thing I did with this box is I pulled the bearings out of the wheels. Uh, there's some bearings in there. Clean them out with a brake parts cleaner and uh, oil them back up with some bearing oil. And put a new wheel and belt on it. 
Um, and then also make sure you set the mesh on the pinion gear on the motor and that it's not too tight. When I got this box, the pinion gear was so tight it was just screaming and whining. Um, and I had to replace all the wiring in it because it was bad. So I've got a spare box here. Now, with all that said, um, I don't ever have problems with this box. I keep this with me just in case. But I thought I had it set up for my Truggy and I didn't, which is, which is good because that lets me show you this other trick that I use to set, set up the box. So you've got your box, you know, you just put these on, they're in random places. So you don't really know, you know, it's difficult to get started sometimes. So what I like to do is I get some nail polish and I find the top of the wheel and I put a little dot there and then I put a dot on the center line of the wheel over here. That one's not very accurate. Then I find the end here. And I basically mark the top center of the wheel locations. So, you'll see what this does. Super cool. When you're trying to set this up normally, you can't see anything. So it's hard to see that black wheel and where it's actually at. When you push down to start your, your vehicle, if you notice the wheel, right now it's center on my chassis, but once you push down, it, it moves towards the front of the chassis. So sometimes what I do for that is I set the chassis offset a little bit more forward, which I need to do that. So that way, when you're coming, when you're actually pushing down, you're still, you're still in the center. So I've got it kind of back set, just a tad, yeah, right about there. Because what you don't want is to be hitting the chassis. So that looks good. So now when I push down, I'm centering the chassis. And that's what you want. So right now it looks slightly offset, but once you actually go to engage, it's going to because of the leverage action, it's going to move the location of the wheel slightly. Um, now, hopefully it's pretty obvious that you should carry spare belts and wheels. I'm ready to go to war on some starter boxes here. I don't ever want to have issues with them. So, thanks for hanging out guys. Have a good day. See you later. Thank you so much for watching my videos and supporting me. Um, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and most importantly, comment below. Uh, please let me know if the videos helped you, what you would like to see in the next videos, and if there's anything we can do to make the quality of the videos better for you, that would be great. Um, if you're a vendor and you'd like to send me something to review, uh, product review, or would like to sponsor me for racing, uh, my email is just down here. Send me an email, we'll work it out. Um, other than that, collab on guys.